So this morning we will be teaching on spiritual warfare and words. All through this month we have been teaching on the concept of the word of God. And this morning we will be teaching on the concept of spiritual warfare and words. Can you please turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Hallelujah. All the things I've asked for, I hope that they're available already. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 in verse 3. He says in verse 3, For though we walk in the flesh, I wanted to take note of the construction. He says, For though we walk in the flesh, that means that although our activities are in the physical region, what does that mean? That means as a businessman, when I'm talking about sales and business, it's a thing in the natural region. That means that if I'm looking for a promotion, it's a thing in the natural region. He says, though we walk in the flesh, he said, you must understand something. That there are orchestration. That's where I'm going to. There are orchestration that are not of the flesh. So the way to think about this is this. I don't know if when you were younger, you 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 um, what do they call it? You ever saw the operation of puppet masters? Did you ever see it? Yeah. Puppet shows. So in the puppet show, what you will see is a puppet pulling the hands like this. You know, pulling the ha other hands like this, raising one leg and having conversation. But behind it, there's a puppet master that is pulling the strings. What the apostle Paul was saying that in the physical, you will see a lot of things happen. But the things you see happen in the physical are not of a physical origin in itself. That they are being orchestrated from another region. So see what it says. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. After the teaching this morning, you will be able to understand significantly how people come under satanic attack you will be able to understand significantly how some people are under attack and they're not aware of it and how to be able to bring out people from all manners of attacks by the power of the word of God. One of the things I've seen consistently with Christian is this. You will see a Christian go from place to place and telling you that I have a spiritual problem and he has been to 10 churches and those problems have not yet been solved. And the reason why is that people don't understand the principles of the word of God as regarding spiritual warfare and the spiritual operations. So see what it says here. He says in verse 3, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. So there is a walk in the flesh. There's what we see, but there is an orchestration that is in another realm. So see what it says. He says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The word carnal is an old English word, meaning man-made. He says, the weapons of our warfare. He said, there's a spiritual warfare and what we used to fight are not physical weapons. He says, they are not man-made. What are they? He says, they are mighty true God to the pulling down of strongholds. The question is this, what are strongholds? When I was a young Christian, we used to think strongholds were strong demonic network in the heavenly places but the bible can explain itself there's a principle in the bible called the law of context so see what the bible calls strongholds keep reading he says to the pulling down stronghold next line and what casting down imagination so what are strongholds strongholds are what imaginations strongholds are what imagination strongholds are thoughts imagination and knowledge that has a stronghold on you that's what they are they are thoughts they are imagination and they are knowledge that has a stronghold on you he said casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ what are strongholds number one they are imagination they are things that you think about. They stay there. 
they are strong thoughts in your mind. What are strong goals? They are knowledge. The Bible says, what knowledge is this? The knowledge that opposes the knowledge of God is the knowledge that is contrary to what God is saying. The third thing about strong goals is this. What are they? The Bible says they are thoughts that are against the knowledge of Christ. And I'll give you a good example. There is a great man of God called Derek Prince. It's passed on to glory. Derek Prince walked alongside with Catherine Kuhlman. And Derek Prince had cancer of the bladder. He had gone to stay with his daughter, had cancer of the bladder. And when he had cancer of the bladder, you know, one of the, one, of, one curate in the Anglican church, this is maybe over 50, 60 years ago, called him and said, I want to come and pray with you. And when they went to pray with him, he was a preacher. And he told the guy, he said, I don't think, because they told him that the cancer of the bladder, as at that time, was not the deadliest cancer because it spreads easily and kills easily. And so when the guy was going to pray, he told the guy, he said, do you think your prayer will change anything? And the guy said, don't worry, let me just come and pray. The guy held his hands and began to pray. Then he said something. He said, in between the prayer, there was a struggle. It said that it was almost as if I had the vision that I was going to die because of this cancer. But in between the prayer, I, there was another vision in my heart that I will not die, that I will live. He said, that was when I knew that I will come out of this thing alive. He said, this is six months after I've gone back to the hospital. And what has happened? The cancer is no longer in my body. But guess what? The attack was first on the inside in his imagination. In what? In his imagination. In his thought. That was where the, the attack is. You know the thing? When we speak about these kinds of operation, you know, one of the things I've said to you is this. I said physical things follow spiritual reality. Can I have the spray? Do you have the spray? Thank you. And this is what I want to say. Just stay with the spray. The way I want to say is this. Spiritual reality control and dominate physical realities. That's what I want to say. Let's say that this, my brother here, had farted. And the whole place is thinking. We now came with air freshener. We did this. After some time it didn't go, we did this again. What will happen? The air freshener will dominate his smell. So much so that the death that came from him will not be smelt again. When I say spiritual reality dominate physical, that's what I mean. That the physical reality is there, but there's a new element you have introduced that dominates everything and changes completely. You, you, you understand what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Spiritual reality will dominate it, will regulate it, will subdue, will control it. So when he says, though we walk in the flesh, he says of the flesh, this should be impossible, but spiritual reality has the power to subdue it. That's why you understand something. That when the axe head sank into water, there was no way it should come up again. But the loss of the spirit was in oppression. And because the law of the spirit was in oppression, what happened? The axe head defiled the law of gravity and began to swim up. Why? Spiritual reality has the ability to subdue, to dominate natural realms. No wonder apostle says this. He said, though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. The challenge with both Christians is this. They are trying to fight in the flesh because their war it seems to be in the flesh. And that's why they always win. Although the war seems physical, don't be fooled. Although the war seems physical, don't be fooled. He said, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war. The orchestration of the things we see are in the spirit. Glory to God. An executive director in the bank came to see me today in the office. You know, and when he came to see me, one of the things she said was this. He said, thank you for leading us to prayer and teaching us God's word. He said, there's a way when they orchestrate with you in the office and they plot against you. He said, I've seen God fight for me. God fought for me so much that I began to pray and say, God is enough. You have shown them that you love me. And the reason why is this. You can go ahead and report to this and go ahead and talk to this. But you must remember. Though we war in the flesh, he said, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. He said, the weapons of our warfare are not canal. We can write a report, but our hope is not in the report. We can write a query. Our hope is not in the query. This is the reason why people submit papers. It never works. 
because they arrange the right papers and submit for the contract. But they do not understand that though we walk in the flesh, the weapons of our warfare are in the spirit. That means when we submit the proposal, we're going to the secret place because that's where our power is. And we begin to touch the superlunar. We begin to touch the supernatural because beyond what is done in the flesh, there's supernatural power that will be enforced. Glory to God. I said glory to God. This is why people are fooled when it comes to the things of the spirit. And you will see the life of Jesus Christ. This, this is what fools people. When you see spiritual people manifest, you don't see the spirituality. Just like Jesus Christ. You will never see Jesus Christ say long prayer in front of people. The longest prayer is what? And the secret. But once he has touched spiritual potters, he only comes outside because the portals have opened and he gives command. So people get to think that because they just say it, that's why it happened. They don't understand that behind the scene, there are operations of the spirit that's gone ahead. It's the same thing. When you see a medical doctor say, I've graduated, behind that certificate is a, le a lot of years of hard work. The problem is the fact that people have warfare and they want to carry out that warfare in the flesh, not realizing that the people that kneel at night will stand in the day. The people that kneel at night will what? Will stand in the day. So while others are sleeping, you are busy leaning. While others are talking, you are busy because you understand. Though we walk, this is just a very fundamental principle. Though we walk in the flesh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So we we're talking about spiritual warfare. As we talk about spiritual warfare, it's important. So we've established the first principle that spiritual realities control and dominate physical realities. Let me give you a good testimony that will help you. Um, some time ago during NLP, and if you don't join NLP, you need to find a way to join. Tomorrow is going to be very powerful in NLP. And you know, this lady said she had submitted her file to NAFDAQ for approval. And her file had stayed on the table for one or two years. That morning doing NLP, we just made a decree that every file that is stuck, let it begin to move. But one and a half hours after prayer, she got a call. The file that stayed on the table has moved. They say, what do you do differently? Nothing was done differently. Everything that should be done in the physical was already done. Only that she now needed spiritual push to make it happen. Let me tell you something eh? What you should have done about the contract, most of you have done everything. What you now need is spiritual push. What you now need is just that push of the spirit. So what is spiritual warfare and what does it look like? The devil come to steal, to kill and to destroy. For, we, so for weapons of the enemy in destroying and in stealing and killing. The first weapon is ignorance. Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. The first weapon is ignorance. Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. See what it says. I fear by any means as the serpent began Eve through his subtility so your mind. Did you see that again? Did you see that again? So your mind be corrupted from the simplicity of the gospel. Listen to me. That thing that corrupts your mind that says that you are an addict to cocaine and there's nothing you can do to break out. That thing is a demonic arrow. The reason why is this. The Bible says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. It says, sin shall not have dominion over me because I'm not under the law, I'm under grace. So that knowledge that says that this is sin, you cannot break out from, that is demonic attack. That thing that tells you you will never do well in life is a demonic attack. How do I know? Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10. It says, say unto the righteous, it shall be well with you. So, every knowledge. Because the challenge is this. So, this one happens. People go from this deliverance to this church. Go from all these kind of prayers. There's no change because they do not understand the nature of the attack we're talking about. And they wonder why the prayers are not working. So, you will see, you will see the man doing business. The woman in business. She is hustling, is hustling, is hustling. It's not working well. But the reason why is that there's an attack is on that. And that attack has corrupted his mind. Let me tell you something. Can I be honest with you? Yes, when you see anybody that has prayed all manners of prayer on an issue and there's no change, 
90% out of 100, that person's mind has been corrupted. All I have to do is to sit down with them. You will hear it. Once they start talking, the corruption will come out. Because corruption cannot hide. You can't see a decayed body and it's not smell. Once you listen to them, it will smell. Like, oh, wow. 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 Ah. <laughs> you just hear them say things like, ah, my life is finished. Hey. You don't understand. That conclusion, where did you get it from? And the first thing Satan used to attack people is ignorance. What is ignorance? Number one, the Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, it said, my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. So, the majority of Christians are already destroyed and under attack because they are ignorant. Many people play with thoughts. They don't know that thoughts determine their destiny. I'll give an example. 15 years ago, I went to see one of our pastors. She used to stay in Ikeja. And as I got there, as I parked my car, I'd called her that was outside. I wanted to come and see her. As I parked my car, I just felt they would steal my car. So I said, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. As I walked further, I felt they would steal my car. I said, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. I just called her back. I said, my sister, I will see you later. I took my car and went. The reason why is that this voice I'm rebuking, rebuking, rebuking. That I'm, is not living. Something is happening here. Are you, and many of you know what I'm talking about. Because you have expressed that kind of thing before. I just, <laughs> I just told myself that if they steal this car now, the best you say is sorry. Glory to God. I'm telling you, by choice... There are certain, let me say that by choice. There are certain words I do not say. There are certain mindsets I do not entertain. There are certain songs I do not sing. You may think you are singing. Let me give you a good simple song. Sweet mother, I know go forget you. For the suffer where you suffer for me. That song, con see let me tell you, in a simple way. It contains the travail of a mother. But in a simple way. It suggests that every mother must go through this toughness and hardship. And you know the thing? Most of those songs we sing in our most vulnerable states. And the seed will enter into our hearts. A lot of you that wanted to get married here, the best thing you read online is how relationship break up. You do not understand you are walking against your faith. Bible says faith coming by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And you want to get married. And the best thing you read is how people are broken up. How they have cheated. How men are not okay. How women are insane. All those kind of things you read. What do you think will happen to you? Whatever you watch is what you become. But you just think that you are passionately listening. You know, you're passionate. You just say that I'm just listening. You're not just listening. You are, you are being attacked. Some of you have children. I'm telling you. You want, to, you want to make your children do something. They say, Ojuju Kalaba is coming. You are teaching your children demonic fear. I'm telling you. Ooh, what kind of nonsense is that? You are teaching your children to have fear for demonic power. That child will go, she says she have a spiritual husband. You caused it. Because when that child was young, the seed was sown. That when you hear demonic power run, she will lend oppression of the demons from you. Glory to God. Are you hearing me today? The first thing Satan uses is ignorance. The second thing is deceit. Deceit. I mean, read it very well. It says, said, he said, if was deceived, it was a deception. That deception that the best men are married, until you deal with it, you can't be married. It's a deception that there are no real guys again, that there are no real single girls again, that the best of them are married. It's a deception. Read what the Bible says. He said, I fear by any means as Satan deceived him through his subtlety so that your mind will be correct. How did Satan lose, uh, sorry, how did Eve lose his a place? He, she lost a place because she was deceived. That thing that tells you that there's no money in Nigeria, that's why you're not rich. That thing that tells you 
tell you, because you have been thoroughly brainwashed by the devil. And that's why I say, I cannot make it in this country. And it's true. Until you leave, you can't. Because you have said, I, me, I will make it here. When I travel, I will make it there. When I'm not there, I will make it there. Are, are you hearing me somewhere? The Bible says, everywhere the soul of my fish shall step upon, I will possess it. He said, I'm like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Whatever economy I'm in, I'm like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He says, I lie down in green pasture. And if I'm in Lagos, it's green pasture. If I'm in Canada, green pasture. If I'm in Abuja, green pasture. If I'm in banking, green pasture. If I'm in fashion, green pasture. Say amen. amen. Declare with me, I lie in green pasture. This is how Satan destroys everything. He will tell you, you can never make a... Some of you, he will tell you, your husband is a devil. That's why your marriage will break up. Until you fundamentally change that thought that my husband is not a devil. You cannot have a happy marriage. Because he gives you this mental framing that makes marital peace impossible for you. He will tell you, your wife, she's a useless person. And the thing is that once you have that mental framing, that's it. But where did it come from? Look at it. He says, I fear. It was, this is, <laughs> oh my God. Paul was telling them that if this happened, I cannot help you. He said, I'm afraid. Let me tell you something. Eh? The most difficult Christian to help is the, is the Christian that Satan has fought his mind. Hey! The reason why is that if you try to help them, they think you, they will think you are doing them. Because it's a self-sabotage exercise that is happening. You'll be telling them, like this, like this. They'll be fighting. They'll be fighting you to go in the path of destruction. They'll be fighting you. Did you notice something? When Satan, when Satan deceived Eve, the Bible says when Eve looked at the fruit, it was beautiful and desirous to eat. Why? As soon as the mind was corrupted, our eyes began to see differently. Once you see your husband as the devil, you will begin to behave differently. Once let us talk, you say, what does he want to say? Satan has come again. Are you here? Yes, sir. <laughs> Glory to God. There are, four, there are four weapons of Satan I will take two. And maybe in the previous text, in the next episode, we'll talk about the rest. Another weapon of Satan is accusation. Revelation 2 verse 10. Satan is called the accuser of the brethren. What does that mean? Let me tell you something there. Every time Satan wants to attack you, he will bring up your wrong. I'm telling you, he will bring up your wrong. He'll say, what are you talking about? Is it not you? Is it not you? God bless me, God bless me, God bless me. What else did you tight? The way you just be weak. Is it not you? All the errors you have done in your life. How many abortions have you have? Is it not you? The, see, let me tell you. Because he uses the accusation to attack you. I, I told you the story. And the reason why is that once you feel accused, you will feel condemned. Once you feel condemned, you cannot stand in faith. Once you cannot stand in faith, you cannot receive your grace. You can shine grace, grace, grace if I tell you to not work. Because grace works by faith. Hallelujah. Many of you here, yeah, you need to be serving in church. You know why you're not serving? You are full of condemnation. That's why you're not serving in church. You know you have a call. But condemnation will not allow you to serve. Meanwhile, you need to serve yourself out of condemnation. Are you hearing me? Condemnation. Listen to this. Any voice that accuses you and reminds you of the bad you've done, that's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit talks to you about repentance. Satan tells you of the wrong you've done. Sa this is how you know. Satan always points at your past. God always points at your future. Are you here? Can you become free today?
I'm telling you something. This is very powerful. You enter that transaction and Satan says to you, let me tell you, you know all the wrong things you have done in the transaction. You know all the wrong things. Just forget it. No need for you to pray again. You say, that's true. I've started by Satan. Let me finish by Satan. Let me tell you something eh? Anywhere you start from, God is there. He starts there. Can I help you? There's no sin you will commit that will surprise God. God knew you would do it. He planned for it. When you repent, he planned, he, he planned to be at that place because he knew you would repent. So, when that voice says, forget it, God says, I'm here now. Repent. Some of you, you know the reason why you can, because every time you want to do something good for God, you remember the past. You remember the past. You remember the past. My brother, he said, remember not the former thing. Consider not the things of old. He said, behold, I do a new thing. Glory to God. There's one more I've not mentioned just because of our time. I'm going to jump. So how do you know when someone is under an attack, a spiritual warfare? Just one word summarizes everything. It can be different things, but one word, abnormal behavior. I'm telling you. What will happen? The kidney that should work will not work. There will be secretion in a place where there should not be secretion. They will say, your womb is secreting substance. But your womb should not be secreting substance. It's abnormal behavior. You will just, you will just see someone that is unnecessarily stubborn. Abnormal behavior. That's what the Bible calls the activity of seducing spirits. Because the work of seducing spirits is not that it's a fine game. No, no, no. Seducing spirits is about deceit. They are so deceived they cannot see the light. Abnormal behavior. When you read the Bible, eh, you will see it. There's a place where there's a demonic oppression that people have never seen before. But I want to show you. The Bible says when, the, when Jesus Christ got to the tomb where the madman of Gadara was. Yes or no? As he got there, you know it was just on the side post and the madman. The demon said, I want to come out. Where should we go to? There were no other human beings to possess because it was just on the side post. Who did they go to? They went into what? Into the, into the bigs. And they ran into the swine. Good. When the people of the city came and they saw what had done, what should they say? Come, sir. Come and what? Help all of us. What did they do? They drove away Jesus Christ. You know why? The demons had left the pigs and entered them. You could see abnormal. I'm telling you. How do you help somebody and the revenge on you? It's the activity of evil spirits. The same thing with the Pharisees and Sadducees. How can someone be healing the sick and casting out demon and you think of killing him? You, this is the thing about the work of evil spirit. You will not know it until you can critically see that this is the work of Satan. I mean, someone came and healed the sick, healed the madman. Shouldn't all of you say, hey, come into our region? The Bible says they told him to leave. That's very abnormal. Same thing with Jesus Christ. He healed the sick, the Pharisees and the Sadducees gathered against him. Why? The Bible says that they were motivated by demons. They told someone that this is Barabbas. He's a robber, a terrorist, a bandit. Choose one between him. The Bible says the Pharisee moved the crowd. Did you see what? Listen to the, listen. He moved the crowd. It's an oppression of the principality. Those are forces that move audience. That's why you will see in culture, people will just be a certain one at a certain time. They will all just start sagging. A spiritual force will just enter the atmosphere. It's not the sagging that is the problem. It's the, what is connected to the sagging. You will see the manifestation of that spirit in an element. And many of you are so trendy, you don't even know what it means to just jump, jump on it. Someone said Gen Z. You never know, you have to jump on it. <laughs> Glory to God. Let's close. I'm telling you, when people are under attack, they will just, you'll be telling them, go this way, go this way. They cannot go. They must go on. Because the influence, their emotions has been overtaken by the oppression of principalities and powers. 
they cannot tell that meetings have been helped perform their destiny until they get to a place of destruction, they cannot be recovered. I'm telling you, I've seen it many times. It's after something happened, they now come back and say, Ah, Pastor, you said it. I said that. So, what's the use now? Are you hearing me? So remember we're talking, now I use this all this time to talk about the operations of the evil spirit and spiritual warfare. But the reason I'm saying this is because for you to understand the place of the word of God in spiritual warfare, but you need to understand the dimension of it. So the first thing you must understand is this, thoughts are portals for spiritual and demonic interference. So thoughts are not ordinary, thoughts are portals, they are doors. Thoughts are doors. Thoughts are doors. Be, watch, be watchful what stays on your mind. That thing that says all they look for in church is my money. Those are satanic thoughts. Because once you come to church like that, there's something that has put your mind already. You cannot be blessed. Doors are thoughts. Um, sorry, words are thoughts. Ephesians chapter 6. And we're going to close here. So let's read from verse 13. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, the word rulers of dust is the Greek word cosmopoteron. That's the Greek calls it. He says, and against spiritual wickedness. I want to notice that these are spirits that are wicked. Spiritual wickedness in high places. But this is what I'm jumping to. So it lists out everything to us. But I want to jump to verse 16. And it says this. It says, there are many weapons in the armor. But it says this. Look at verse 16. It said, above all, the apostle prioritized something. Take note of what I'm saying. I did not say the apostle that described the armor. He said you prioritize it. He said above all, take what? Wearing you are able to do what? That's what I'm going to. Watch this now. Let's understand the two concepts. What is the shield of faith? What is the fairy dart of the wicked? This is the fairy dart of the wicked. The very dart of the wicked are those thoughts that come to you. Did you notice what the Bible says will happen to Saul? The Bible says a melancholy spirit will enter him and he will be depressed. How does he enter him? It's a thought. It will be depressed. The thought will just say to you that you know you have a problem with childbirth. And you don't understand. This, you are not married though. But the thought says to you have a problem with childbirth. And you don't deal with it. And the thought is a seed. It will start growing. It will start growing. It will start growing. Five years after you get married, you now have a problem. The problem is that you didn't deal with the thought as a seed. It has now a full-grown tree. It's now very difficult to deal with. It has become a stronghold. As you're packaging your interview for this something, but you know they will refuse you. Nobody's there with you, but you don't know they shot you out. Of. Because you are not aware that these are spiritual attacks. I want to ask you something. <laughs> when, the, when the devil turned to Jesus Christ, do you, saw, do you think you saw the devil and said that? Just say, bow down before me. This and this. No, it, Jesus Christ did not see the devil. You know why? If Jesus saw the devil, it was not a fair temptation. Because no human being will see the devil and fall. Yes or no? The Bible says he was tempted like we are. So when I'm tempted, do I see devil? No. What he was going was that as he was in the wilderness, he saw stone and the thought came, you are hungry. Child of God, take this stone and make bread. Take this stone and make bread. But because Jesus Christ is spiritual, he recognized it. So what did he say? He didn't let the thought rest. He said, man shall not live by bread alone. Why? When the thought comes, you answer with your mouth. I'm telling you, 
This is, this is what you call the shield of faith. This is the shield. How do you use the shield of faith? Once the arrow is coming, you, you, you lift up the shield by speaking. 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 Praise God. You lift up the shield. Something said that, and you know your child will be sick. It will be just die. I said, no, he will not die. The Bible says, you, the Bible says, lift up the shield. It said, nothing shall cast their young. Let me tell you something there. Eh? A short mouth is a short destiny. The reason why you, you're non talking has brought you to where you are. Your non talking has brought you where you are. Look at what it says. Look at what it says. He said, above all, you are going for the interview and you can see the fear. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. Because you know, I didn't mention the fourth thing that Satan used to attack is fear. Oh. Hebrews 2 14. Look at what the Bible says. Hebrews 2 14. Let me show you quickly. Quickly, please. Hebrews 2 14. Verse 15. One verse downwards. Let's you together. One to go. That he may deliver them. Who what? Where what? The fear was what stand used to hold them. The fear that you will not do well is what is killing you. You will see a minister, you give him a cell, you say, be a cell that. He said, I'm afraid. He, he will not do well. That fear is now will not do well. Because he has already said it, I'm afraid. He says, true fear where is the fear that made them all their life subject to bondage. So that will just say, you see, girls of your size cannot be married. <sighs> then you, you begin to have problems. Let me, uh, can I talk to you? Everybody that's lost someone due to sickness, if you know someone like that in their family, forward this video to them. If you lost your mother, your father to cancer, kidney problem, especially if you're the one providing for, care for them or providing money or you were around. The reason why is that in the process of being around, that seed will enter if you're not careful. How do I know? People are here. I will not tell you. All the people that have lost someone to breast cancer, as soon as something happens in their breast, the first connection is, a, hey, this is how it's said with my mother. They don't understand that through the fear where all their life subject. Are you getting me? Your brother has gone through a divorce. Your sister has gone through a divorce. Any small thing, I now will be divorced. That's why you will see someone when it comes to business they're doing so well. When it comes to mind, they're doing so bad. Then you see that person when it's coming to mind, they're doing so well. When it's coming to business, they're doing so well. Check their background. The seed was came from somewhere. The seed came from somewhere. And instead of them to come and sit down in a ministry that's anointed with the word and prayer, they'll be running from pillar to pillar looking for what's not missing. Because this kind of deliverance is not I cast you out. No. Luke chapter 4 says we preach deliverance. This kind of deliverance is by preaching because it's the, demo, it's the demolition of stronghold mental patterns. Glory to God. It says, we'll up. Do you have that phone with the shield? Do you have it? The phone with the shield? Yeah, those are magnets. I, I wanted to, do you have the phone with the shield? Do you have a phone that has a shield here? A phone shield, a phone screen, it has a shield. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Allow me to mess up your phone. Lord. This is the phone. Look at the shield is on it. Does it touch the phone? Why? The shield is on it. What God is saying is that let the devil throw his best. Make sure your shield is up. The problem, this is what happens to Christian. Bring your phone without shield for me. This one does not have shield. It has shield. No, I want a phone without shield. It doesn't have shield at all. No shield. This one. Look at this. If I put chewing gum on the two, this one, this one will stick. The other will not stick. Because one has a screen shield. The other does not have what screen shield. 
question, do you have screen shield? Does your finance have shield? Does your marriage have shield? Does your job have shield? Or you are just... Let me tell you something. This Christianity thing that you guys are playing with, like, I'm just coming to church. I just come on Monday, come on Wednesday. You don't even know what most people, most people, and most people don't know Christianity. They are religious. Religious means they say we should do, we do. Once you understand Christianity is a practice. When you get to your place of work, you protect your work with a shield. You protect your income with a shield. Did you hear what the, what the devil told God about Job? God, he says, how can I attack him? When you are built, look for that scripture of me, Job Thomas. When you are built an edge around him. Are you hearing me? What is that edge? That edge is our faith. Look for that scripture for me. Job chapter 1. Have you found it? What? Just 1 verse 10. Job 1 verse 10. Look at it. Because this is why two things happen to the same Christian. One Christian will sink, the other one will stand. Because the two phones look alike. But one has a shield. The other does not have a shield. See what the Bible says. Verse 9. Verse 9. Go back to verse 9. See what say. This is Satan talking now. The mass of spiritual attacks. And Satan has answered the Lord and said, Do I job fear you for not? Verse 10. He said, As thou not made what? An edge around him about his house and all that he had on all the side and has blessed the work of his hand that his substance is increasing the land. The question is this. This is a question. Use your mind though. Hope you know Satan does not know everything. Yes or no? Yes. How do you know there was a shield there? When he attacked, he found it. Yeah. He's not as if he saw it. Satan is blind. He doesn't know everything. It was when he sent the attack, the smaller demons told him, this guy is not penetrable. They said, what is wrong? Kill his finance. They said, you can't touch it. They said, kill his marriage. You can't touch it. They said, why? Because there's an edge. And ultimately, Job broke that edge by being in fear. Are you hearing me, somebody? You know what you're teaching about studying God's word? If you don't study God's word, it's, I don't know what to say to you. Because when the attack comes, how will you raise the shield? You will not say somewhere in the Bible, you are finished. See what the Bible says. Jesus Christ, when he came, Satan came, he didn't say, do you know where I am? He replied him word for word. He says, turn the stone to bread. He said, the scripture said. He said, bow down before me. The scripture said. He said, oh, he said, throw yourself down. He said, the scripture said. Why? Everything was responded to by the word of God. When the attack comes at you, what do you say? Baba mio, baba mio. The thing we did for heaven. <laughs> I, I, I resist it. I, <laughs> it's not my portion. Things that have no spiritual significance. What does this mean in the scriptures? Did you see the apostles doing this? Did you see them doing this? He said, I refuse it. What, what does this mean? People that refuse it don't snap fingers. We understand that authority is expressed by words. Authority is not expressed by snapping fingers. So, once we say it, it's like that. Let me tell you something. Eh? If you are not given to the word of God, you need to be given. So that when the attack comes, you can release the shield of faith. Shall we pray? Stand on your feet, everyone. Let's go ahead and pray. And this is what I wanted to do. Everybody pay attention to this. There might be one or two areas you have been challenged. Don't just be spraying bullets. You know where you are challenged. Some of you are not challenged with finances. It's the marriage that you are challenging. And, and I'm saying this. I wanted to pay attention. Some of you, you've even... <laughs> your finance is so attacked that for you to give is a problem. I'm telling you. Because every time they say give, there's a problem in your mind. Because it's a mentality that if I give, I will die. And you don't understand, that stinginess is not normal. It's tied to something spiritual. Glory to God. You will find where the attack is and with your mouth. It's not something you finish today. 
because it's a stronghold, you begin to dismantle until we root it out. Are you ready? Go ahead and begin to declare. I can't hear you. Go ahead and begin to declare.